Hello, this is Simon from Kiras Instruments, and in this video we'll go from this design into reality. I will go through the whole building process starting with woodworking, contouring and shaping the body and neck, threadwork, finish, stain and lacquer, and finally the assembly. I'm cutting down some local source alder and marking off knots and other imperfections I need to cut off. I'll saw a larger piece in two, which will make the body size for the single middle piece. All pieces are plain and jointed, and then the excess is sawn off. I'm marking the center line of the body to find proper placement for the outline. All joints are sanded to ensure perfect fit. I'll saw small notches to make room for the clamps while gluing. I'm sanding the neck blank down to its final thickness. And then marking the place where to saw the headstock angle. The sawn of piece will be glued back on, so I'll sand down the rough saw marks. I had this piece of flame birch, which I stained black, just to see how the figure was on it. I'm sanding the surfaces flat and then jointing the edge to 90 degrees. I'll cut off a thin sliver, which will make the headstock veneer. And then finally, I'm splitting the piece in the middle to mirror the figure on both sides of the guitar, a process known as book matching. When the glue has dried, I'll remove the clamps and sand the body top flat. I'm remarking the center line of the body to book match the flame top. Which is then glued on using all the clamps. Continuing with the neck, I'm planning the sides for gluing on small pieces, which are needed for the headstock shape. The headstock is sanded flat for the veneer. I'll saw off the excess of a fretboard blank and then tape it to an index plate. This index plate has small notches that match fret locations, for which slots are sewn on the fretboard. Next, I'm taping the fretboard to another jig plate, which I'll take to my small CNC router. During the filming of this video, the spindle on my CNC had broken down, so I just MacGyvered a Dremel tool onto its place. The outline of the fretboard and pockets for the inlays are milled in. And while I switch to a 0.8mm end mill to finalize the inlay pockets, I'll continue working on the neck. I'm sawing off the excess from the back of the headstock, sanding down the excess of the veneer, and marking the center line of the neck all the way to headstock. I use my homemade drum sander to thickness the headstock. I'm taping on a template to the headstock and then routing it down to the final shape. The neck template is screwed on for routing. I'm using my routing jig to make a pocket for the truss rod. Next I'll remove most of the excess material on the neck plank. And through the magic of editing, the fretboard is just finished on the CNC, ready for gluing. I'm drilling small holes for toothpicks in the fret slots to keep it in place while clamping. I'm sawing off the excess material on the body. and then sanding the top flat. The body is roughed down with a hand plane and then sanded down to final thickness. 
Let's jump quickly back to the inlet. I'm joining some paddock and then sawing off a thin sliver of it. I'm taping the piece to another milling jig and taking it to my CNC which will cut the inlay pieces. Back to the body now. I'm finding the placement of the neck in relation to the body and placing down the neck pocket routing template. The true center line of the guitar is determined by the placement of the neck. I'm using laser cut steel templates to route the pockets for the Floyd Rose bridge. And for the pickups as well. I'll drill holes for the electronic controls and then tape down the body template and route the shape. The Floyd Rose spring pocket as well as the electronics pockets are routed on the back. I forgot to film gluing the inlays, but the process is the same as in my previous video. Here's what we have at this point. I'm marking the places for the neck bolts, and then I'm drilling them open. I'm using the holes as a guide to mark where to drill the holes for the threaded inserts in the neck. I'm sketching the heel of the body and then finalizing the shape with an oscillating spindle sander. Next, it's time to finalize the neck profile, my favorite part of any build. I'll mark places for the luminlay side dots and then drill holes for them. I'll reduce the fretboard to its final shape, which is my least favorite part of any build. I'm cutting the stainless steel fret wire into correct lengths and then re-sawing the fret slots to make sure there is enough room for the fret wires, which I'm gluing and hammering in place. I'm gluing the side dots in, and then sanding and filing the fret ends level with the fretboard. The fret ends are rounded off so they don't feel sharp while playing. I'm sketching the bevels and belly contour on the body and then roughing them open with an angle grinder. Drilling holes for pickup wires is always a nerve-wracking process as is drilling the pocket for the output jack. After finding my gloves, I use an extra long drill bit to reach the battery box cavity and then the bridge pickup pocket. I'm using a Dremel tool to make more room for the wires. The body and neck are sanded down with progressively finer grits.
I'm using black stain as contrasting color to show me where more sanding is needed. In total, I'll repeat the stain and sanding process two or three times. A template is used to mark positions for the tuner holes. After getting all tool marks sanded off, I'll apply the final stain. And once more, sand the stain off the bevels. The first coat of lacquer is applied. I'll repeat the same process several times during lacquering, quick sanding with scotch Bright, and then applying a new coat. I'm taping off the side of the headstock veneer for sanding. This will create a fake binding. The body and headstock are taped off for the red tinted lacquer. I thought I'd save some time not taping the bevels off super accurately and then just sanding the excess red off. But this will end up biting me in the behind. I sanded through the first coat of lacquer and the black stain exposing bare wood. I tried touching it up with a small brush, but it didn't quite work. So I ended up resanding and staining the top again. The water slide decals are applied, and then the film is partially dissolved with a specialized solvent gluing the decal down. Here, I'm sanding the top and reapplying the stain. Onto the fretwork. First, I'm checking that the fretboard is not bent either way. And then I'm going through each fret at several locations to check for any high spots. I'm using the same radius sanding block as before to sand all frets level. And then reshaping the frets back to their original shape, a process known as crowning. I'm rechecking for any high spots and then rounding fret ends again. On to the assembly. The FU Tone red titanium parts are installed on the GoTo locking tremolo. The fretboard is cleaned of any lacquer and tape residue. and the frets are polished to a high gloss. I'm casting some epoxy resin to the thrust rod pocket for the locking nut screws to grab onto. The pickup and electronics cavities are painted with conductive paint to shield them from electromagnetic interference.
I'm wiring up the output jack. And forgetting to wire up the battery box negative lead in the process. The tremolo mounting pins are installed, locking in the grounding lead at the same time. The paper towel senders the pickup in the pocket for the mounting screws. Wiring up the electronics, this time noticing that I forgot the battery box negative lead. Time to fix that as well. I'm boring the tuner hose free of any excess lacquer, and then installing the tuners. Here you can see the reason for the epoxy resin. I'm using white mineral oil or paraffin oil to treat the fretboard. The neck is fastened to the body with three M6 machine screws. Time to string the guitar for the first time and check the setup. I placed a few brass shims underneath the locking nut to raise the strings just a little. Everything checks out and just the strap locks remain. And here it is. One question remains, will it shred? Yeah, I think so. Thanks for watching.